In this tutorial, we're going to show you how you can track the front of a tablet or an iPad and then replace that surface with some kind of futuristic UI. We're going to look at the UI in another tutorial, but right now we're going to look at the tracking, which is a bit problematic here because a hand moves in front of the tracking markers. But there are some techniques you can use to get round issues like that. So let's do this. So here we can see the futuristic Westworld style UI we're going to try and track onto this iPad. It actually tracks really well, but we're not looking at one of the more problematic areas of the footage. So let's go and have a look at that. So yeah, we have these great tracking markers to track off, but unfortunately Josh moves his hand right over one of them and then moves it away. This instantly makes the shot massively harder to track. So how are we going to get around that? Well. There's a few techniques we can use, but let's do the easy stuff first. So first of all, we're going to try and work on tracking the left-hand side of the footage. So we add a tracker to the clip, and then we want to make sure it's a double point tracker. This adds two of these little boxes over here. Zoom in a little bit. We then have the red and green boxes that we're going to place. Let's put that on the bottom, and then right over that feature, the cross of the feature, we'll expand out the red area, that's what we're tracking, and make it expand the green area, that's the area it's going to look in. So we'll put one at the top here as well, and then we're just going to play forward. As you'll see, I've kind of started halfway through the clip. This is because I find the features that I'm tracking to be really sharp here, and we can always track forwards and backwards. Skip back to where my track started, and then press the track backwards button. Here we go, it's already done all the tracking. And yeah, it's a really solid track and it's looking good. So I'm going to name this tracker because we're going to make so many of these in this tutorial. I'm going to call it Left Edge. And then I'm going to create a new point. And I'm also going to call that Left Edge. Now what we want to do is go back to our Left Edge track, select Rotation and Scale, and then select that new Left Edge point and click Apply. This has transferred that tracking data over to the point. Now in the viewer, there you go, you can see it's tracking on nicely. This is exactly what we want. So we're going to do this top edge now. Exactly the same principle. We add a tracker. We make sure that it's a double points tracker. Then we're going to move these over these clear, very easy to track points. Again, the red square is what we're looking for, what the software is going to be trying to find. And the green square is the area it's going to look in. Get that right on the center there and expand that out as well. And again, I'm not on the first frame because we don't need to be, and let's just track forwards. Again, it's finding that very easy. Keeping those green areas as small as possible makes the tracking faster. And now let's go back to that first frame. I've just expanded it out so I can see where the keyframes are and track back to the beginning. Again, we've got a very solid track. So I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to call this Top Edge. And then I'll make another new point, and surprise, surprise, I'll call that Top Edge too. Now we go back to the track, we make sure the rotation and scale are clicked, change the layer to Top Edge, and click Apply. Now we're going to try and do the complicated track, that bottom right point. Again, it needs to be a double points tracker. And what we're going to do is the one that's on the left here, this is the first tracker, we're going to move that to our position in the bottom right. And then we'll put the other one, the second one, in the bottom left. We'll expand out and do just as we have before. But rather than pressing play this time, we're going to step frame by frame to make sure that we get exactly what we want. So first of all, I'm going to step backwards because I'm not quite at the start of the clip. There we go, that tracked nice and easily. And now I'm going to go back to where I was, which was here, and start tracking forward until the hand moves in the way. So we're all good here. Now the hand will begin to move and it will start to cover the tracker. Now what we're going to do is we're going to leave the point exactly where we want it, but we're going to change where the feature is to something else we can continue tracking that isn't being covered by the hand. So I'm going to move it to the home button of the iPad. I do this by holding Alt when I drag, therefore the actual position stays in the same place. I'm now going to move forward a bit, and I think actually maybe the point in the center is a better one, so I'm going to move it up to there, again clicking Alt when I drag it so it doesn't move the origin point, and then I'm just going to keep on tracking forwards. 
Now the important thing is we want to get this track back on that original point as quickly as we can so that we don't have too much drift in our track. Here we go, I've moved it back, and now I can just press play forward and let it do the rest of the tracking. Now this has done pretty well for us. In fact, very well. But if we zoom in a little bit and look at it more closely, we do have some issues here. There is some drift. See, we've moved a little bit away from that central point. So how are we gonna get around this issue? Well, let's first of all finish off where we are. Let's call this bottom edge, make a point. We'll call that bottom edge as well. And as before, we move that tracking data, rotation and scale, across to the bottom edge, we click apply. And now when we go back to the viewer, and we click all these points that we've recorded, you'll notice one is missing. This is actually because this was recorded at the same time as our top left point. So all we need to do is parent a point to that and offset it, and it will be in the right position because the scale and the rotation and the position will all be set from that top left point. But what are we gonna do about this one at the bottom right? So it's pretty good. And then when the hand's in place, we can see it's drifted off to the right and down a touch. This is enough to throw off the track and basically make the UI not sit correctly on the iPad and everyone will be able to tell. So how are we gonna fix it? Well, first of all, I'm gonna make another point and I'm gonna call this bottom edge fix. We're then gonna parent this to our bottom edge, making sure to reset the transform so it sits exactly on that track. And all we're gonna do is look at that original track and at what points we know the track was in the right place and then when it was being covered up and add our own keyframing to fix this. So first of all, I'll try and tweak the first couple of keyframes, then I'll move all the way to the end. We can see how far it's off and we'll move it back into position. So all this is gonna do is animate between these points of reference that we know and hopefully that's gonna be enough to make this a solid track. So I'll just do a bit of tweaking here at the start. I should have probably actually moved the tracker one frame earlier to a different reference point because the blurry hand started coming in and making it move, but it's very easy to correct. And now we can actually see that the tracking is massively better. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that bottom edge point to the bottom of these so that I don't use it anymore. And it's only a reference there to move that fixed point around. Now, if we select all these points, the top three, we'll see we're in a really good place. All of these points are tracked, but hang on, you're saying, these aren't in the corners of the screen. How am I gonna track the UI to this? Well, it's all very simple from here on out. So I'm gonna create a point and then duplicate it four times. And I'm gonna call these top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And then I'm gonna actually start parenting them. So that bottom edge is actually our bottom right. So we can parent it directly. Make sure to reset the transform, otherwise it'll be offset. That bottom left is actually our left edge because the main origin of that was in the bottom left. And then the top left is actually our top edge because again, the origin of that was in the top left. And then we have the top right, which we want to parent to that top edge again, and then just offset it by dragging it to the correct position because the scale and rotation of that point were referencing that other point, so this should work perfectly. I'll just move it across, move it down. You could just drag it wherever you want it here. So that's great, we've got our four points now. And things are actually very simple from here on out. So if we just have a look at all of these, all we have to do now is find a frame where we can see exactly where we want these corners to be, somewhere around here, and actually just drag these new top four points into those corners. I'm gonna just go a little bit over the edge. It'll just help us out so that we don't have to do any masking or anything like that. And now if we select these, these are all just tracked in place. This is exactly what we wanted. Of course, we'd have to do some masking of the hand. Let's just drag on the interface shot that we have. And then we go to the effects and we select the quad warp tool, drag that on. And this is as simple as it looks. In each one of these, we just parent it to the right point And there you have it. It's tracked on, 
It sits perfectly on the iPad. You want to switch on the motion blur and things like that for your final render, and you're going to have to do some masking around the hand. But in the next tutorial, we're going to show you how we actually put the animated version of this interface together so you can have a go at doing it yourself.